Hi, this is Danny Doyle, and you are watching my Fire Emblem Path of Radiance 0% growth run. This is chapter 12, and joining me once again is Jacob. How are you doing today, Jacob? We get a new unit in this chapter. Oh yeah, we do. Do you wanna... Well, we get two new units, actually. Um, one of them I'm significantly more excited about than the other. Oh yeah, Soth is pretty cool and all. I can see why you're so excited. Yeah, he's the Jagan of Radiant Dawn, so he must be pretty good in this game. I mean, look at those stats. 5 strength, 11 speed, like that... That's competitive with Maya, who's like one of my best combat units. Uh, why do, I wonder how he actually stacks up against Gordon, stats-wise. <laughs> um, He's definitely faster. In all Gordon. seriousness, Soth is pretty terrible in this game. Um, oh, yeah, I'm, he's... Ugh. Ugh, yeah. What were you going to say? Like, well, when it comes to thieving, I think we already touched on Soth a little bit whenever we were talking about Volk, that Soth has less stats than Volk, but he uh, opens doors and chests for free. And as, when it comes to trying to steal stuff, 5 base strength, you can steal some stabs, maybe some really lightweight weapons with that. But beating him experience to level that 5 strength up is going to be so, so hard. I mean, he has 7 attack before enemy defense. What do you mean level that 5 strength up? That's what he has. That's all he gets for this playthrough. Um, <laughs> because you never level him up. <laughs> yeah, which is really funny because Soth's, uh, he has a skill that takes up 15 capacity that gives him higher growth rates. Yeah, and from just... what I've heard, it's... From what I've heard, it's not necessarily higher growth rates. It's more like it re-rolls some of his stats if he doesn't get them. It, it's really weird how it actually works. I'm pretty sure it gives you an additional re-roll for blank stats or something. Um, either way, it's really not worth it because um, while he will get better growths than Volk, he's stuck in thief caps, and thief caps are pretty bad. And also, like, look at his bases. Like... I just, I don't think it's worth fielding him over Volk. Um, there are some maps where you might want to field two thieves. Um, and in a, in a run like this where you are very conscious of money, um, I can see myself deploying him for a couple of, a couple of like, oh, I'll save 50 gold here, 50 gold there, because I'm going to spend a lot of money on forges. Um, but, in general, I don't foresee much use from Soth. Yeah, um, I'm looking him up. 55% strength growth is cool and all, but... Like, I guess you could bonus experience him, but Blossom also cuts his bonus experience in half, like it does for Paragon giving you double bonus experience. And the bonus experience in this run is actually very tight. Um... I've been doing some bonus experience math, and um, remember how in chapter one, if you remember all the way back in chapter one, I was like, there's a pretty reliable two, -tier, two turn clear, but I'm not worried about efficiency, so I took like three or four turns for that chapter. Oh yeah, of course, back in the good old days. Um, I am exactly one turn on chapter one short of meeting the exper bonus experience benchmark I want to meet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it feels so bad that I like I audibly said like I know how to do this faster, but I'm not going to. And then fast forward to here, and um, it does mean that I'm going to have to make sure. I think I think I can reliably do a pretty fast clear of chapter 14 to make up for it. But it, it's frustrating because I wouldn't need to if I had just done it correctly. Um, we get another unit, uh, who's much better, uh, we'll talk about her when we get her, um, but, yeah, uh... Yeah, joins much, much later. I <laughs> am, uh... <laughs> Sorry, it just occurred to me that you were talking about, yeah, Tanith is, Tanith is <laughs> fucking godly, we'll talk about her. We get another unit in this chapter, who joins a I little bit later in this chapter. Who is... I know you've been so excited to talk about this unit. I just love messing with you about it, though. Um, I'm deploying Mist instead of Riss this chapter as well. Um, I talked about like how eventually I want to get Riss to S-Stabs because uh, 
the Ashera Staff is nice. Um, I also want to get Mist to C stabs. I think she's at E right now. Ah, uh, yeah, she's at E right now. I want to get her to C by without a king. Um, and this is a chapter where she will have the opportunity to gain a lot of staff experience. Um, I think she's actually pretty close to D. Um, and which is why I put the mend on her so that hopefully, oh, I didn't put the mend on her. Um, wow, which is why I'm going to put a mend on her. Yeah, I don't remember. Oh, nice men's staff. I've got a men's staff. <laughs> um, there. That's oh. why I put the mend on her. Um, oh, yes, nice. oh, look at that. We're master sealing Ike. <laughs> Even if I could early promote Mike, Ike, he's not worth it. Um, he's holding a bunch <laughs> of items for someone else. Um, he's also holding the spirit of Oscar because, uh, in the grand tradition of naming forges after our fallen comrades, I have named the Lance Oscar. Um, I'll go over all the forges I've done at some point, but, um, right now, you know, there's just the Ileana and the, um, I forget what Titania has, but they're, they're two identical axes, um, and, oh, uh, one other thing I wanted to touch on, I gave Titania the talisman, um, I gave it to her a few chapters ago, I just forgot to mention it, she has the highest res of the combat units on my team, um, and she can use hand axes for 1-2 range. So it just seemed worthwhile. I think you generally want to give uh, items to people who are already good in a stat, especially in a mode like 0% growths. Oh yes, if it can save Titania from taking extra damage from a mage, it'll be super helpful. Someone like Eren might still get to hit KO'd by some mages, so a talisman's not really going to help him too terribly much. Yeah, Kieran and Jill are never going to, like, be able to stand up to a group of mages. Their hope against them is to kill them on player phase. Um, I'm ready to begin. I see we're bringing all of our army onto the small boat. So, typically, the way that I do this map in a casual playthrough is I deploy both Mist and Riss to take up these slots, um, the way that ledges work in Path of Radiance is the flying units can fly over them, but you can't attack over a ledge at one range. So blocking both of these squares gives a nice little safe choke point. Um, that always confuses me so much whenever I play this game vanilla and I can't attack over ledges with one range. Yeah, because the, the, the conceit of this chapter is that... Um, the conceit of this chapter is that we're being attacked by a bunch of crows coming at us from all ends, so like, they're gonna overwhelm you and there's no safe spot, except for there is this one little place. We're all holding up in a corner that's actually a straight line. Now are you going for a fast clear to get a bunch of bonus experience, or are you gonna wait around for the sacrifices? Uh, well, I don't really have an option there. Um, I kind of have to wait around for the stat boosters because I can't kill them fast enough to uh, get like an incredibly fast clear. You actually, you usually want to deploy Marsha if you're going for a really fast clear um, because she's going to take on the people who are out of reach of your ground units. I actually had no idea for the longest time that you got a whole bunch of stat boosters if you waited around this chapter. I would always route it as soon as possible to get the maximum amount of bonus experience. And it was on my most recent playthrough, I was bragging about how quickly I beat this map. And you told me something along the lines of, well, what about all the stat boosters? Yeah, I mean, they're not the best in the world. You get two Seraph robes and two secret books. Um, those are actually the last two Seraph robes of the game. Um, so oh. if I want to improve... My initial plan was just to give them both to Jill, who joins in this chapter. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that anymore, because I think I want to save one for a later unit, who is going to be a big part of my combat in the late game. Okay, that makes sense. This clear is actually pretty, um, pretty RNG-dependent. Um, there's a lot of 70s and 80s, and I can't afford to miss any of them. Ooh, that's always rough. I see Bo's Kieran coming in clutch here. 
Yeah, 2x effectiveness. Um, so, the reason that I can't afford to miss any hits is because if Jill gets knocked into healing AI, I cannot recruit her. Um. Oh, that's true. She'll just run off the map somewhere and use her boulder area. Yeah, it, it spirals pretty quickly. And oh. she always recruits herself, correct? So you can't just talk to her with Ike. Yeah, that's the other frustrating thing, is I need to create a safe space for Ike, um, because literally every enemy on this map will one-round him, uh, no matter what. All that studying under Grail and the Grail mercenaries, and Ike loses to a couple birds. And that's why I can't do my vanilla strategy, because normally what I do is I deploy Riss and Mist, as I was saying. I block the top half with uh, one of the units I'm training, usually like Kieran or... Marsha's usually flying for the fast clear, but um, usually Kieran or Titania, or like if I'm being cheeky, maybe I'll like have Nephany or someone, but someone strong there, and then Ike blocking the bottom. Uh, but Ike cannot block anywhere. Kill to Ileana. Hey, look, Ileana finally gets some good use. I mean, Ileana's been been pretty fucking helpful this playthrough. I can't believe I considered skipping her. Yeah. Could you imagine how bad of a situation you would be in if you didn't have her right now? She is a good player phase unit. She's like Lysithia. She's just a nuke. I can't wait to see how you're going to deal with the boss, because that boss is mm, kind of scary sometimes, even in the vanilla playthrough. He's pretty fast. He's not that bad. Like, he doubles Jill, but, uh, well, I'll talk about it when I when we get Jill. Um, but yeah, this, and then Jill needs to not miss this. And that's, yep, that was the last piece of RNG, because if there were two crows, then she would not be able to fly to the place I need her to be at. Um... There we go. Okay. Yeah, I, re I remember constantly looking for ways to hopefully get the boss to unequip his demi band so I could steal it from him, but oh well. So, this is the. Uh, I'm, I'm out of the RNG zone now. The only thing that RNG will affect now is um, how much bonus experience I get. Oh, how sweet of you. You're healing the green unit. Uh, that's because she gets attacked by two ravens next turn, and if she gets hit by both of them and all four attacks, uh, they'll knock her into healing AI. Mm. Oh yeah, you still have to wait for her to actually come talk to Ike. Ambush spawns, what is this? Finding Blade? She takes like no damage from these guys. Well, there's a reason for that. Um, so, Jill has an item called the Laguz Guard. We saw that in work last chapter, is the reason that she didn't get one-rounded by Mordecai. <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically what happens is... Let's talk about Jill. Okay, we'll talk about Jill and then we'll touch on the Holy Guard. Uh, uh, Laguz Guard halves the damage done by Laguz attacks. Um, this rounds in your favor, or rather, it rounds down, which is in your favor if you're wearing it, and... I don't think anyone actually ever has one. There might be enemies that have them, but it, it rounds down. It rounds in favor of the person defending. So she's taking almost no damage because Raven's whole thing is that they double. Like they're the fast ones, like how cats are the fast ones and tigers are the strong ones. Ravens are fast ones and hawks are the strong ones. Um, so they don't deal too much damage. They still deal enough, but like I think if one of them deals 7 times 2, which would be 14, it actually only deals 3 times 2, which is only 6. Um, That's so, so good. It's so fucking good. Uh, and it's the reason that I can train her on this map. Um, Jill is going to be taking over Titania's spot because enemies do not see the Laguz guard. They just see like, oh, I deal 11 times 2 damage to this person who has only 24 HP. Hell yeah, I'll do that. And then they end up dealing, like, only 10 total instead of 22, which is just such a significant difference. 
Um, she still needs to be healed every turn, and she still needs a mend every now and then. Uh, but which is fine, because mend gives you like four times or three times as much staff experience as heal. So I want to be mending anyway, because... I think it might be theoretically possible to get Mist to C by the end of this map, and if I can do that, I want to do that, because I really don't want to field Mist anymore. I want to continue to grind Riss's staff rank. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's Lagoose Guard, and this is Jill. Hi, uh, Jill. Look at her fucking stats. She has 11 defense and 11 strength. She's kind of slow. Like, she's going to take the speed wing. Uh, that I've been saving for a long time, which runs kind of counter to what I was saying about giving stat boosters to units who are already good at the stat, but she, looking ahead, someone has very, someone has compiled a very useful resource of all of the enemy stats of all of the enemies in Path of Radiance. And there are some enemies who I would like to not double her, and giving her 11 speed makes it so that I can make those enemies not double her if she has an Iron Lance or a Slim Lance or something equipped. Um, none of those enemies are on this map. Everyone on this map, except maybe one, depending on how the Ravens uh, roll their speed stat, um, will double her no matter what. But in later maps, it's going to be important to have her 11 speed instead of 9. Um, and I think that not getting doubled is a bigger deal than potentially doubling some things that you wouldn't otherwise just because as a flyer she's going to be on the front lines makes sense what do you think about jill sorry i i have a lot to say about jill but i'm curious what you think jacob um five out of ten kind of good unit i guess potentially get the fuck <laughs> out of my playthrough <laughs> oh, no, no, no. even in a vanilla playthrough Jill is still one of your best units in the game. I have a preference towards Marsha just because she joins earlier, but Jill is still amazing. You're shooting yourself in the foot if you go a single playthrough without a Path of Radiance, without using Jill at some point. She's both interesting as far as a unit and a character goes. She gets axes after promotions, which is much better than Marsha getting swords after promotion. Uh, what's her base lance rank? Is it C I think or it's D? It D? I think it's D. Yeah, that's workable. So I oh. think that the common argument is like Marsha is better because bonus experience and she has higher availability. And I think that I don't disagree with that, but I think it's a lot closer than you would um, generally imagine. Um, Path of Radiance is one of the few games where caps actually matter. Like units will frequently cap important stats with quite a few chapters to go. Uh, and Wyverns just have a better strength cap than Pegasus's, and it's also not too hard to double every enemy, because enemies are pretty weak in this game. That's very true. Marsha's strength cap is much, much lower than what Jill's would ever be, so Jill can keep climbing higher and higher with strength. You give her a forged hand axe or a forged steel axe, she'll one round just about anything to throw at her. Yeah, axes are also the other big thing. The res is a little low, of course, typical wyvern, but she'll have so much HP that by that point. And she can one-shot a mage on player phase, and then can't do out of range of other mages, too. Yeah, there's not too much in the way of, like, there's siege tomes and there's some dangerous mages, but I think Blizzard defense form? is more important than resistance. Oh, definitely. Defense is always going to be better than resistance. The only thing I could see that would be a huge hindrance to her would be something like a Blizzard Tome, potentially. 3 to 10 range, hits on her low res stat, and yes, joking, effective damage only two times, but Seed Tomes have some pretty high base might, so that'll improve the damage that's on her quite a bit, but you don't fight too many Blizzards throughout the game. I think there's only two or three chapters I can think of that have Blizzard Tome. There's a lot in Maniac mode, but I still think the most common Siege Tome is Bolting. Oh yeah, there's a lot of Bolting in some Maniac as well. I can only think of Blizzard being in that first chapter that Ike promotes after, the Great Wall where you get the really good Sniper again. There's the Pitfall Bridge. I think there's one or two Blizzard Tomes. Otherwise, nah, that's not, there's not really a whole lot of them you have to worry about. 
I mean, my last playthrough was on Maniac, so I'm just like, there's a blizzard in literally every chapter after the Great Wall, <laughs> but um, there's not. There, I think there might be one in the chapter with Jill's dad, uh, which is just another reason that the game doesn't want you to deploy Jill in that chapter. It's funny. Um, so you end up killing Jill's dad, uh, and the game like warns you, like, don't deploy Jill. She might betray you if you kill her dad. Um, the, unless you're an idiot, there's no consequences because... The only way you can get Jill to betray you is if you have her talk to her dad. Um, which, like, it's kind of cool that you can have her talk to her dad and then she gets recruited into the enemy and you can't get her back. Um, but if you just, like, deploy her in the chapter and just don't have her talk to her dad, and her dad won't actively try to talk to her, like, there's no danger of, like, oops, I left her in range of her dad, guess she's an enemy now. You have to, like, actively go out of your way and be like, <laughs> I kind of want Jill to be a bad guy now. Um, so. I mean, if you really want that to be a thing, I guess you just play Radiant Dawn or something. Because <laughs> I, I haven't gotten that far in Radiant Dawn, but I think you mentioned that there's, like, one or two times where your army can fight and Jill's a red unit at some point. So if you really want to see red unit Jill, just play another game. I mean... She's wearing red armor, and she's got red hair. The theme of my good you units is they're all redheads. Like, look at my team right now. I've got Titania, Kieran, Jill. Um, Mist is blonde, or is, uh, brunette, and Ike has blue hair, but they're both bad. Um, and then there's Riss. Um, but yeah. Let's, uh, I might let's be biased towards the color red. It's not like your YouTube and Discord icon has Lena with her red hair as the icon. Hmm. Sounds to me like there's some favoritism going on with hair colors. No comment. Um, <laughs> I actually don't... I don't have, like, hair color favoritism in real life. Um, ooh, that's unfortunate. Uh, fuck. Uh -oh. That's okay, I'll do a rescue drop. Rescue dropping is so good. I really wish rescue dropping would come back. Yeah, I'll heal up Kieran. I think that's important because he's got lower HP. Um, most of the Ravens are going to choose to attack Jill. I actually did not know that they do not see the Laguz Guard whenever they consider who they're attacking. I don't know that for a fact, but I feel like it's the only explanation for them choosing to deal like two damage to Jill as opposed to five damage to Kieran. I love that that guy on transform he took so long. <laughs> yeah, Dolphin does not like transformation uh, animations. It lags. I think that's just Dolphin in general if you're not using a $6,000 gaming PC. I mean, I upgraded my computer between uh, last chapter and this one. But see that? Like, that looks like it's going to be lethal. It's not going to be lethal. That's six damage. Oh, really? Oh! Yeah, the combat forecast doesn't take it into account, which is why I think that the uh, AI doesn't either. Uh, I think I have I... to mint here, though. I didn't know that either. I didn't know the combat window didn't consider your Laguz guards and the Bayork guard you get later. That's pretty interesting. I think I already have the Bayork guard, actually. Oh, it's yeah, on the yeah. left. Oh, left comes with it. That's right, that's right. I was suddenly trying to remember where you get the Bayork guard from, but Leth comes with it. Yeah, because yeah, Leth I, is like the opposite that. of Jill. Is she's racist against the Bjork. Um Which is something that I really like about Jill starting with the Laguz guard is because it's completely in character for her to be wearing a Laguz guard into battle. I mean, so, uh, I guess... There's not too much to talk about on this map other than, like, I'm training Jill. I'm trying to get her, uh, she's gonna get promoted for next chapter, um, but so is one other character, so my goal is to get Jill at a very high level of experience. Um. Yeah, we'll do this. Yeah, I think you'll still be able to do this fairly quickly. I don't know if you're going to go for speed over chipping. For example, like switching to uh, Steel Lance, so that way you can finish someone off instead of chipping them twice with an iron. 
No, I'm gonna go for chipping, because um, I'm promoting Jill by getting her to level 21. In Path of Radiance, you can promote either with a Master Seal or by getting to level 21. Um, oh, hi. And because I only... You get three Master Seals, but the third one shows up so late that you functionally only get two. Um, so I'm going to try to promote Jill with bonus experience so that I can also promote another character using the Master Seal next chapter. Um, and because of that, getting her to a very high level um, means that I spend less bonus experience. So my goal is to have her at like level 14 or 15 by the end of this chapter, which feels high since she joined at 8, but Lagoos give a lot of experience. Um, they do. I do find that Lagoos give you a whole lot of experience. Ooh, we've got to train that full rank. This is actually to stop um, Kieran from killing that raven in retaliation. I'm going to leave the bow on him. Oh, so he'll just keep chipping Kieran into infinity. So you can finish him with chill. Oh no, I hope he doesn't use... Cor oh no, he corroded you. I know, he corroded me. Ugh, so this boss has corrosion, which can get rid of weapon durability. Um... Not a big deal if you're not using a forge or like a silver weapon or something. Yeah, it it's only really kind scary if you're using something like a forge that you really don't want to run out your uses on. But yeah, Lagoos, um, a lot of Lagoos will probably give a full level up on kill, not to mention the chip experience. Uh, also, funny to note, uh, this is one of the... I think this is one of only two chapters where Lagoo's enemies will untransform. Um, because later Lagoos have a special power where they just don't untransform because of mad science. Oh yeah, that's true. The only other one I can think of is the desert map. Yes, and in both this map and the desert map, uh, untransformed Lagoos still have aggressive AI. Which is why we have that one just, like, hovering next to Jill. Um, I mean, the one who was hovering next to Jill who was, like, stopping other people from attacking her. Um, until she killed him to clear me, the way. It reminds me of the priests in Binding Blade that have offensive stabs, that have status stabs. Whenever they run out those status stabs, they just... Ah, Ooh, counter! Just, oh, we got nice a counter. counter. And we got a crit! Oh, Titania! <laughs> Oh, I love you, Titania. Oh Mwah. no, your Jagan, your Jagan is stealing your EXP from Jill. Yeah, one of the few chapters where the EXP management actually matters. Um, it's funny. I was looking at other games to zero percent growths, um, and uh, I've come to the conclusion that in might as well. Um, that in the 3DS games, experience management is actually tighter in 0% growths than it is in uh, regular growths. Because you don't gain stats, so you can't, like, contribute later on if you don't get the skills you need at an early point. All that's true, because you still earn the skills as you level up. I never would have thought of that. I mean, because in... Awakening, awake. Oh, oh no, you got corroded again. Awakening is a very growth unit heavy game. That is, I can't even imagine what Awakening zero percent growth looks like. Someone because... has done it on Lunatic Plus, well, like that not matter. just Lunatic, oh. Lunatic Plus. Oh my God, I beat Awakening Lunatic for the first time yesterday, or not yesterday, oh, a few so... days ago. Um, I feel so sorry for you. I actually had a really fun time. Um. But, and eventually I do want to try Lunatic Plus. Um, oh god, why do you hate yourself so much? When I eventually 0% growths Awakening, it's not going to be on 0%. Or it's not It's not going to be on Lunatic. I mean, it will be on 0%. Um, it won't be on Lunatic. Uh, oh, I don't, I don't blame. That's... Yeah, Awakening... I know that's completely oh, he game, stole the I... boss's elixir! I love that! Oh my god, I love that. Uh, that but, means the boss is easier to kill. Doesn't he... But doesn't he drop that elixir? No, he drops a blue gem. 
Oh, that's right. Unless the boss just takes it from him next turn. <laughs> yeah, they trade the gem. Just like, oopsie. Uh, so that'll be Ooh. even if I even if I miss and he hits both, what that's if... not lethal, and I can just heal with mist and trade the iron. There we go. Oh. Because again, it doesn't so... take into account the Lagoos guard, which means that it's only dealing ten. I was gonna ask if the forks would have been a more accurate option, unless you weren't trying to kill. I didn't want to get hit with corrosion on retaliation. Fair point. Okay, uh, how much do you want to bet? Is Mist going to make it to see this chapter or not? Um, I'm going to press X the doubt. <laughs> I, you might, considering how long the chapter seems to be going on for, but... Oh no, he took it back! He took it back! Uh, well still, the re the generic crow using one use means that it'll be, uh, it'll be faster kill. I think she's gonna make it, um... I've done some practice runs of this chapter, and she made it in one of those, I think. Um, one out of 16, right? So, it's only 40 staff experience in Path of Radiance to go from D to C, and it's 30 to go from E to D. Um, oh, I, for I forgot this is kind of a defend-esque map, but I forgot that it's not turn-based defend. It's a route defend map thing. That'll be six damage, also six damage. There we go, we'll do that. Yeah, it's all it's it's just route. Um what I don't want to have happen is have the boss attack Kieran or Titania. Can he reach either of them? He can reach Kieran. But Kieran's blocked, okay. But yeah, that's what I'm talking about with, like, these two spaces are safe because um, we kind of breezed over it. Because this is a ledge, you can't attack at one range. Um, and because the crows only have one range, as long as I'm blocking these two choke points, uh, they can fly next to I can miss, but they can't attack them, which is good because both get one-rounded by fucking everything. I've never thought of that before. I've kind of played around with the ledges a little bit when it comes to defending people in this chapter, but I've never thought of the idea of just parking two people on the edges so they can't attack over them. No, I always lone man this chapter. I just send... I have Ike at the bottom and someone else at the top. Um, and then Mist and Riss in the middle. And again, Marsha never... flying around on the outside. Yeah, I've never played this map not fast because I didn't know that the staff boosters were there, so I was always trying to play for low turn. It is a shame that I I really wanted to deploy Marsha this chapter, but I just could not find a way to keep her safe. Um, Marsha and Kieran actually have a pretty good support uh, that is going to be helpful. Yeah, we'll do that. There we go. Oscar gets another kill. Um, Marsha and Kieran have a pretty good support. Well, I don't know, like, as far as affinity. They have a pretty fast support. Um, see, she's already at 13. Um. Because I think, doesn't... Kieran has fire. Yeah, correct? which would boost Marsha's attack. Doesn't Marsha also have fire? I don't remember. Let me uh, check. yeah, can you check for me? But yeah, either sure. way, um, so if I were to deploy them, I deployed them both last chapter, I'm deploying them both next chapter. Um, if I were to deploy them in those two chapters, then they would have their support by the Makalov chapter. Which would be very helpful, um, because that is a chapter where Marsha has to like go off with a very small group of people if I want to do it quickly, which I do. Um. Okay, so I looked it up. Marsha has fire affinity. Kieran has wind affinity, funnily enough. What does wind give? I know fire gives attack and hit. There's a earth here somewhere. I know earth is the best one because it's full avoid, 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 avoid. Yeah, it's full of void. <laughs> nice counter. Oh, um, speaking of supports, I did activate the C support for Ike and Titania specifically for this chapter. Um, there we that go. Yes, sense. thank you, attack Jill. 
Corrosion. Corrosion. <laughs> corrosion. The Iron Lance ah. broke. <laughs> Before Close she could counterattack, the Iron Lance broke. Oh my god. Wait. Oh my god. Yeah, she never countered him, did she? No, because the Iron Lance broke. Oh my god. So he, okay. broke, so he broke it mid. He broke it with his first corrosion and she couldn't counter. That's really funny. That's hilarious. You're gonna be dead broke by the end of this chapter if this keeps up. He's gonna keep breaking all your weapons. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to use the Oscar. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so Earth is full of void, like we said. Wind is half hit, half a void. So all together you're getting well it's you know, it's fire and wind so it's like attack and yes yeah, so you're getting a little bit of attack full hit and a little bit of a void which is yeah, that's pretty good there we go there we go I want to balance getting Jill experience with like still getting bonus experience uh oh, yeah for sure. There's not much to talk about with this chapter other than just, like, I love Jill. Um, do you know if untransformed Lagoos give the same experience as transformed ones? I want to say that in this game they do, but I'm not 100% certain. I do believe they do, because I remember in the desert map later on, you get some bonus experience if you keep the Lagoos alive, but I would just say, eh, screw it, you still give me 50 experience for killing you anyway, so... <laughs> I did not expect her to break. I think that was a full use Iron Lance, too. We're pretty damn yeah, close to it. I mean, you got corroded. I got corroded so many times. Hey! Oh, well then. Looks like I lost. Uh, so you owe me a million dollars. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember signing that. Let's see. What is corrosion? I remember Corrosion has a really funny formula for how it determines how many weapon uses it runs out, how often it goes off. Ooh, bad curing level up. There we go. There we go. Boom. Ugh. Kill for your Jagan. Kill for my Jagan. I mean, they're basically everyone's my Jagan at this point, other than Ike. Um, but yeah, that's the last we'll see of Mist for, like, a long time. Um, I considered trying to find a way to get her to be promoted because- God fucking damn it! Stop corroding my shit, you asshole! Okay, wanna know something really funny? What's the it's... corrosion proc rate? It's skill percent. Oh my god. What is this guy's skill? It can't be any higher than like 15 or something. I mean, he's a raven, and he is transformed, so he has transformation bonuses. He's got 15% chance, and he's procced it like four or five times. Well, way more than four or five. I'm counting more like eight or nine times. That is... <laughs> oh my uh, god, formula... you did. But uh, what level is he, by the way? Because it says eight. here... The formula so the number of uses it corrodes it by is users level divided by four so he's corro he's only corroding it by two uses each one two three four one two three four he's got eight move right he's got nine move okay i just want to speed this process up <laughs> one too many corrosions so much fucking corrosion like jesus Huh, looking at how Corrosion changed in Radiant Dawn, it's half of skill percent chance to activate, but the number of uses decreased is your level. So it decreases four times as many uses, oh God, but it goes Jill, off half as often. Stop! Wasn't you are making me question how excited I was about you. Wasn't someone just raving about how amazing. Oh my God, you dick! Something? Don't corrode me, don't corrode me! I don't think she has one of those. Uh, I'll forge your I'll forge your lance called Dick. Mm. Well, this looks like it's going. Is Just this that RNG part you were talking about? 
No, the RNG part was... Again, like, the RNG at this point just determines how fast I clear it and therefore how much bonus experience I get. Oh, Elixir! Aww. Oh my god, what the <laughs> fuck? This girl's loving this chip experience. All one so of that, it. So that'll actually kill her! <laughs> oh, well done, Lagoo's guard. Too good. Does he still have one use of elixir yet left? He still has a use of elixir yet left. Oh my Ow. god. I want to feed her this kill though. Uh, can Oscar kill with the bow? He can. Okay. So if I miss, or not Oscar, Kieran. Oscar can kill with the lance. There we go. Fucking there we go. Finally. Oh I'm no, falling. I'm falling. Give me your fucking blue gem. But not the elixir or the gem I banned. Don't take those off of Just loot the gem off of I mean, he basically drank the whole elixir. That that money is like, I think I probably, um, no, I didn't. I I didn't because he didn't hit any forges. I was like, if he hit forges, I might have broken neutral. I don't remember how much the <laughs> fucking blue right. gem costs. I'll check on injuries. Oscar's injured beyond repair. Yeah, oh I know God. blue gems are like uh, five thousand in BA. Red gems are two thousand five hundred. <laughs> I don't remember if it's any different in I'm, this game. I'm pretty sure it's identical. Um, there's blue, white, little... and red. Like, these are the America gems. Um, but that'll be it for today. Uh, we have Jill. I'm very excited about Jill. My excitement has been tempered by just, like, what the fuck was all that corrosion? <laughs> <laughs> no more weapons for Jill. No more weapons for the entire army. Ah. Uh... I'll see y'all later. Just, just use soap to steal some more. <laughs> Fuck you.